Ladies and gentlemen, places, please. I must warn you, phone air has been opened. <gasps> Play the terror, but don't lose the joy. Your trap! Mr. Folair, shut your trap! Somebody forgot his spear! The flames, the flames! And remember their hot! Ow! It's almost too real. <laughs> remember, Mr. Folair, you are a savage, not a demented fairy. Don't lose your theatricality! Ninetta, dear, would you move that flower to your other hand? Mr. Folair, there's a problem with your head. Perfect. <laughs> oh, no. Thrilling in the extreme. Gentlemen, this is Miss Ninetta Crummles, the infant phenomenon. And how old is she? She is ten years of age, sir. Not more? Not a day. My dear, yes. it is of the utmost that I speak to you about a great struggle which is taking place outside this mortal temple we call the theatre. The contestants of those aged competents, art and commerce. And art, it would appear from the receipts, is in its usual position of jeopardy. Might you and I have a word, a deux? Excusez-moi. Infant phenomenon. Infant humbug is more to the point. She has been ten for the past eight years. They keep her on a diet of gin and water to hold back her growth. You don't say. I do say, sir. I do. That hammy sprawler keeps the rest of us from doing our speciality. Mine is the Highland Fling. Do you, uh, you like to see it? Please. Ladies and gentlemen, based on the receipts Mrs. Crummles has shown me, Liverpool has little relish for high-minded theatrical entertainments properly conducted. We must give them our pity. Now we must give them something they will pay to see. Romeo and Juliet. But we have no Romeo. Mr. Leadville's leg is broke. No, oh, I don't mind. I can manage. <laughs> Old friend, it may be time for you to move on from Romeo. Move on? To what? <laughs> Leah? <clears throat> Mr. Nickleby will take that part. And do you not think his friend would make a smashing apothecary? His face practically erupts with drama. What an acquisition. 